How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Nazo. This is Nazo Gaming. I hope you guys are doing fantastic, whatever time of day it is. Today we are going to be doing a little demonstration, a little tutorial on how to set up the PlayStation 1 emulator through RetroArch um, and for PlayStation 1. And you'll be able to upscale it to get the graphics right and get it you know, upscaled so it's looking better. There's a little, some little tweaks to get the, the FPS better, all that stuff. And I'll show you how I got it working today. All right, so first things first, let's uh, switch on over here and you'll be able to see my screen. All right, first things first, guys, I did set up a Twitter account. I want you guys, please go over to at Nazo Gaming on Twitter and hit me with a follow. I post stuff behind the scenes. You get to see, you know, my setup here. Um, I'll post interesting games that I'm looking at, maybe trying out, things like that. So please go on over to Twitter and hit me with a follow. Um, but other than that, I do have one other thing for you guys before we get started. Tomorrow, I will be starting uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. It's uh, another iteration into our uh, marathon to Hogwarts Legacy. So I hope you guys tune in for that. Um, also, in the beginning of that video, I'm going to be making a an announcement it's gonna be a big announcement for you guys it's gonna be fun you guys want to be there I, I promise you so make sure to check out that video and um, I will be announcing it then uh, all right so let's get into this let's get uh, you guys set up with RetroArch and PlayStation 1 emulator for and this will work for any game I am gonna be setting up Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets because that's what I'm gonna be playing um, but you can do this with pretty much any game and you can mess around with the settings and uh, you know, make it work for what you're what you're doing. Um, all right, so RetroArch, you just go to Google, type in RetroArch. It's really easy. Um, RetroArch is completely free to download. It is also legal. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with RetroArch because you're not taking, um, you know, game files or anything like that with it. RetroArch is just the um, basis of where you're going to be running all the emulators themselves. So. To get that, you got it right. This is a fake one. Don't don't fall for these guys. Get RetroArch. It's right here. RetroArch is a front end for emulators, game engines, and media players. So you want to get hit get RetroArch. Um, you got a download nightly and a download stable. Uh, download the stable one. The nightly is the latest daily release, and it can be finicky. So download the stable. It'll download down here. You wait for that. It'll be quick. It's not super big and you'll open it and run it and install it like any other program. Now mine will probably pop up since I already have it installed. It will probably let me know that. <laughs> you guys are seeing a black screen now, but here you go. RetroArch setup, follow it through. I'm not going to do it because I already have it installed, but you guys just go through it, install it like normal nothing really big deal about it um from there i'm gonna quit it because i already have it installed but you guys just go ahead through it um from there what you're gonna need you're gonna need um a bios uh like a bios file it, it's the essential bios for the playstation one um and unfortunately i can't link it to you guys um because ideally they want you to get it from your own owned system that you somehow get off the hardware itself um but just go and go on DuckDuckGo. don't do google go on DuckDuckGo, search it up you'll be able to find it there's multiple of them but the um the one that i found that works the best is the one that ends in 5005 i believe it is i'll show you it on here um, and show you where to put it so i'm gonna open up retroarch just so i can see what the file it is is itself um so this is what RetroArch looks like when you open it up. You got main menu, load core, load content, load disk, yada, yada, yada. You don't really need any of this other stuff other than load core and load content for the main menu. For the BIOS, you're gonna wanna be in settings. You got all this drivers, video, audio, yada, yada. This is already set up pretty much, so we're not gonna need any of that. What we're gonna need is directory. So directory, and then at the top, you can see system BIOS. And this will show you where you have your um, RetroArch installed 
and where you're going to want to put that BIOS file file that you find online. So since that's there, I'm going to show you guys mine. So let's pop that open real quick. We're going to go into games. because That's where it's telling me it is. It's in RetroArch and then it's a games RetroArch system. So we want system. Um, I got a lot of them in here. You won't need all of them, but some games require different bin files. So there is somewhere online, there is a, a pack of all the bins. So search for that. But otherwise, the one that usually, oh, sorry, it was 5501 it ends in. SCPH-5501.bin. So you'll find that online, download it, put it in this system folder. Um, that For my game, at least. You may need these other ones. So if you want, you can search for the entire pack and put all of the bin files in here. And that will be for any system you want to run. But for PlayStation, these are all the PlayStation ones I have. And that is what goes in there. Uh, so that once you have that. <laughs> Hold on, guys. We're going to want like a controller to be able to use this because you're, you're going to want to play your games with controller anyway because it's PlayStation or it's like a console um, and they don't really have great support for like keyboards. I'm sure you can set it up in a certain way, but just hook up a hook up a controller um, and then you can use the controller to even get around on this menu. All right. So that is the BIOS all figured out. Next thing you're going to need is the game itself. Now, obviously, again, can't post to where those games are. Um, if you have your own disc, you can, there is ways, look it up on how to um, dump your own PlayStation 1 discs into, um, you know, a .q file, .bin file, um, or an ISO of it, ISO. Um, you can look all that up, or like I said, just Google, don't even Google, go to DuckDuckGo. <laughs> go to DuckDuckGo. Don't use Google for this stuff, but look it up, find out how to download it, download the ISO, and then it's going to go into any folder you want because you can put it into your games folder wherever you want it because what you're going to do is you're going to load it from load content so make sure you have that when you start up retroarch as well um, i'll show you mine so what i have is psx i have a psx stuff folder just in my regular games folder where i have the rest of my games and then i have harry potter and the chamber of secrets which is what we're going to use today we also have harry potter and the sorcerer's stone which we played through recently um and we're not going to touch that one because it's already we're already done with it. But you can dump it anywhere and you'll be able to navigate to it from load content. Firstly, though, before we load the content, we're going to need the core. The load the core is the emulator itself. So you'll see here I have Sony PlayStation, Sony PlayStation, and then I don't, I don't have anything else currently. Um, but what you can do is if you, you know, when you first open this up, you're not going to have anything here. It's, there's going to be no cores installed. So what you're going to want to do is install or restore a core, download a core, yada, yada. So what we want is download a core. It's going to fetch the core list and then boom, you're in the core list. There's all these game systems that they have emulators for, um, but they do not come with the BIOS files. That's why I was telling you, you need the BIOS files. Um, so what you want to go do is go down to the P's for, uh, or sorry, the S's for Sony, and we're going to want Sony PlayStation. And there's a couple of them. We got one, two, three, four, four, uh, PlayStation ones. The one that I'm using, which allows for, you know, the graphic upgrades, the FPS up boost, the widescreen mod, all that stuff that's under the Sony PlayStation Beetle PSX HW. So make sure to download that one. Boom. Core is installed. I already had it, but it doesn't hurt. It just updates it if you click it again. So now you can see load core Beetle PSX HW. We can load that up or when you go into load content, it will ask you which core you want to use. So again, I'll go back to my folder with Harry Potter in it. Boom. And what I've found is that the, the bin file pretty much contains everything that you need, but it loads via the Q file. At least that's what I've been seeing when I've been running it. So what you're going to do is hit the, you know, load it up. And then you can see it says current core, the one that we're loaded into. 
If you didn't load a core, it'll just have the list and you can choose. But we're gonna go with current core, the Beetle PSX HW one. Now you're gonna load that up and you're gonna see the game's gonna start up. The PlayStation will kind of start up like any PlayStation did back in the day. And hopefully you guys have some audio there a little bit. All right, and then we're going to see the game start to load up. Now mine's already set up, but if you hit F1, if you hit your F1 key while the game is loaded, you get this quick menu, all right? The quick menu is where the magic is gonna happen. So what you see here is a lot of stuff in this menu, but all you really wanna go to is core options. You got resume, restart, that's gonna re resume the game, restart the game, close the game, yada, yada, yada. But what you want is core options, all right? So you're gonna go into core options, you're gonna go into video, and you can see here internal GPU resolution. Choose internal resolution multiplier, resolutions higher than one times native, improve fidelity of 3D model, 3D models at the expense of increased performance requirements. So if you have a beefy computer, you could, this can go all the way up to 16. Um, I found that my computer runs four times the best, eight times gets kind of laggy, but four times runs the best for me. So I run mine at four times. You can mess around with that and keep going back in to see what runs the best for you. I also increase the internal color depth um, because 16 BP, BPP is the original hardware, um, but it's gonna have like visible banding and yada yada. Um, but the 32 BPP seemed to look the best for me. Dithering, I have off texture filtering. I turned this to XBR and it seems to run the best, but you can mess, mess with these, like load one of these up. There's a bunch of them. Load one of these up, you know, start the game running again, see how it looks, see how it runs, you know, mess around with these, but these are great to, to test. Um, and what that does is nearest, the setting nearest on texture filtering emulates the original hardware. And then they have some other stuff that reduces pixelation, um, the one I'm running is XBR and it says that it upscale, it's an upscale filter that may improve texture fidelity and sharpness with increased performance requirements, but I have a decent computer and it seems to hold up just fine. And it, um, it, it does increase the fidelity of the textures. Um, wireframe is off. Wireframe mode is off. That would just like make everything into a wireframe. You don't really want that. Um, software frame buffer is on. Uh, crop overscan, you can leave all this stuff. And the this may seem good, this GPU rasterizer overclock, but apparently it has little to no effect and I've even tested that and it does nothing. Um, so that's all for the video and that will give you the increased resolution that you see on my videos at least. Um, and again, you can mess around with those settings and see how you can get it to set up depending on your hardware. Now, the other thing is this PGXP. So after you went into video, I just went back to the core options again, to the main core options page. And then we go down to precision geometry transform pipeline, PGXP. We click on that. And what I have it set up to is PGXP operation mode. I put it on memory only. And then I have the PGXP 2D geometry, uh, geometry tolerance. Sorry, can't, can't talk. Uh, I put that all the way up to eight pixels. Um, and what that does is it helps um, geometries with proper depth information. It, it helped. I, I put it up all the way and it helped, or it seemed to help at least. Um, I left these two off because this one is known to cause lockup. So I didn't want to have any lockup and it only improves reducing holes in geometry, but I can deal with that. Uh, the vertex cache off the PGXP uh, perspective correct texturing. So this replaces the native PlayStation affine text ma uh, texture mapping with per perspective correct texture mapping. This eliminates posi position dependent distortion and warping of textures. So this seemed to help like when you're panning around the textures that are on models don't warp and it seemed to help. So I tried that on you guys test it on your own machines and see what it does. Now, the last thing that I did 
everything else is standard for me. The last thing that I did to make this work the best was emulation hacks. Um, and most of this is set to uh, like a standard setting. The one that I like the, the most is the widescreen mode. Um, Cause most of these are gonna render in like a, a box with um, black bars on the side. And as okay as that is, um, I really like the widescreen mode hack. It does a great job at making it full screen, you know, stretched all the way across and it doesn't look weirdly stretched. It looks native which is nice. Um, the other one that I turned on was uh, GTE Overclock, and that seemed to fix the uh, FPS issues. So when I was first running the game, the FPS was really laggy. It looked like it was frame by framey. Um, and I did the GTE Overclock on, and it helped immensely. It seemed to run so much smoother. Um, everything else I am um, leaving at native for now, and it seems to work great. So I'll show you a little bit of what this looks like, and then I'll show you a little bit of what it looks like on a standard emulator with none of these um, available features. All right, and here we go, guys. We are in the game with all the settings on what we set it to so that it's the good version. Um, and you can check it out. We got full widescreen. Um, everything looks pretty good. The um, frame rate seems right. Nothing seems to be jumping around. The frame rate seems good. We can run around um, and it all looks pretty good. So that is how it looks with um, all those settings, with all the uh, hacks to get it upscaled in resolution and the frames looking a lot better. So now um, the next one I'll show you is the without all this on. All right, guys, and now we are in the non upscaled version with no hacks on or anything like that. And you can just see how pixelated everything is. And I mean, the frames actually are pretty decent in this one. It does, uh, you can see there, it kind of jumps around. And even when I'm turning around and stuff, it um, definitely doesn't seem as good as with that, with those settings that I have. And it's just extremely, extremely pixelated. So that is how the difference looks. Um, and it just plays better to me in the widescreen with the settings upscaled and the um, FPS a little bit higher. That makes it feel smoother. Um, so that is without any settings on. Okay, guys, so that is it for today. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. I hope that helps you get your own uh, emulator set up so that you guys can play any PlayStation 1 game you wanna play. If you wanna play Harry Potter, go right ahead. Um, if there's other games, you can definitely test out those settings that I showed you and see what works best for your system. Uh, but that's gonna be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Um, also, please make sure to go check out the Twitter and leave me a follow there and you'll be updated on everything, on everything that I'm doing. Um, be sure to tune in tomorrow for the um, episode that we're starting harry potter and the chamber of secrets because like i said in the beginning of that video we are having a special announcement um, i hope you guys enjoyed thank you so much i hope you guys have a fantastic day fantastic night whatever time it is for you i hope it's fantastic thank you guys so much and goodbye